Welcome back. Time to check out the default credentials vulnerability on your router. Now, this tutorial is something that you cannot follow because this is going to be different for every type of router that someone has. I can just show you the process of how I went and discovered the default credentials. And you can try to do the same thing in order to see whether you can gain access to your router. So the first thing that I did is I typed netstat-nr to check out the IP address of my gateway, which is most likely going to be the IP address of your router. Then I went to Google Chrome and visited that IP address. If you do the same for your router, it will most likely lead you to some type of a login page where it will ask you for the username and the password. Once you type the username and the password, you will have access to the router settings and you will be able to change a few things here and there from setting up wireless to port forwarding and similar settings like that. Now, if you haven't changed the default password for your router, you will most likely be able to find it on the internet, which I did. I just searched the name of the router that I have right here and I found the username to be telecom and password to be telecom. Nobody changed this username and password, therefore, they're exactly the same. And we even get this warning that says a data breach on a site or app exposed your passwords. Chrome recommends changing your password for this IP address now. We're going to click on OK and pretty much we already gained access to the router settings. We can set up the firewall, VLAN settings, we can check out different settings that we have right here. We have some security settings right here. We also get the port forwarding, which we can perform. And this is something that I tested on multiple home routers and many of them appear to have default credentials where it allows you to log into the router and change these type of settings. But these are not the only default credentials that you can find. For example, if I go right here and I run an nmap scan with dash st command on my router IP address, I will also discover that it has some ports open. For example, it has this telnet port open. We already know how we can connect to the telnet. We can type the command telnet and then the IP address of the target that we want to connect to. If I press enter, we will get another login screen. So if I type something like telecom once again, it will tell me that the password is incorrect. Hmm. So after three attempts, it simply just closes the connection to the router. And I figured, well, if the router default credentials weren't changed, then probably I can find the telnet credentials as well on the internet. And after a few minutes of Googling, I ran across this website where I scrolled a little bit down and I found this post that was posted by someone. It says my router name, which is this one, and we can compare it right here. It is the same name and we get the username and password. We also get how we can enable the shell inside of that router. So let's give it a try. The username is admin and the password is this. Let's go and run telnet once again. Type username to be admin and password to be ZTONPK. And here it is. We're inside of CLI. Now, the next thing that this person does is it types enable. Then it enters the password of ZTE and then it enables shell. Let's give it a try. If I type enable, type ZTE and then shell, hmm, another login attempt. But luckily this person also provided us with username and password for that. This is something that we will most likely never be able to brute force in case we didn't know because this is a really strong username and strong password. However, it is default one and this is something that we can find on the internet. For your router, of course, this will not be the same, but you can go through the same process of searching for the default credentials. Just figure out the name of your router, type it in in Google and try to find some default credentials. For example, we notice that I have open port SSH and Telnet. You might be able to target SSH and not Telnet, or you might be able to target some different port. It could all depend on your router. However, now I'm targeting Telnet and let's go and type in the username and password that this person sent us. 
So I have it written on my left screen and I will type fn and sd 3 zx h and h 168 and v31. For some reason it says bad username. Let's try once again. Maybe we typed something incorrectly. So let's go admin password. Let's enable the password is ETE and let's go into shell. Here we want to type fn n as the 3 z x h n h 168 n v31 which is the login and the password is z x h n h 168 n v31 and here we are we are inside of the shell if i type ls we're going to be able to see the files on our router i can type the ifconfig command to be able to see all of the interfaces that our router has. Here the first interface has the IP address of 192.168.1.1 and down here we're also going to be able to find the public IP address which is right here. Okay, great. We have gained access to the router. We can also go and change directories to different directories if we want to. We can run different commands that you can usually run from your terminal and that's how you can gain access to your router with default credentials. Now give it a try on your own router, try searching the name of the router, first try logging into this page right here, which will grant you an access to some of the router settings. And even if you don't manage to do that, try scanning your router with Nmap, figure out whether it has some interesting ports open and then target those ports with default credentials that you might manage to find online, just like I did right here. Okay, now that we covered this, we're ready to continue with our exploitation section. See you in the next video.